speed, make sure it's working, please. Testing. Testing. This meeting is being recorded. Welcome everyone to the space. Uh, if you can mute yourselves, that would be lovely. And I'm just checking the Facebook Live feed right now. So if you just joined the space, please try to mute yourself so we can reduce the feedback. Um, and let me know if you guys see it going live, colleagues. Yeah, please mute. Welcome everyone to the space. We are honored to share this space with you tonight. Just give us a moment to get set up here. I'm just gonna check the live feed, make sure it's good to go before we begin. Colleagues in NEU, has anyone seen it yet? Carla, I see a yes. Fabulous. Yes. All right. Well, colleagues in NEU. Thank you. All right. Great. We're going to get started here in just a second. Letting some more folks come into the space. And. Okay, welcome to this event. We still have some folks moving into the space. And while we wait, um, what I'd like to do is just have us, one of our colleagues from NEU is going to drop the link to our Facebook page that's public. So for easy sharing, we're just, while we get into the space, we're gonna ask that folks just share this um, live feed far and wide, whether it's on your union page, organization page, your personal page, anywhere you can share. Um, so one of the any you folks just dropped the link in there. Please go there and we'll just make sure we get some shares going before we begin. And we have more folks coming in. For those who just joined, we're just asking you to um, take the link that's going to be in the chat and go to the National Educators United Facebook page for easy sharing and just share this um, solidarity forum out far and wide. And I will pass it now over to our MC for the night. Um, come on in, Marcia. Hey, it's Marsha Howard. Hello, oh, Marcia. how are y'all? Thanks for joining us. How y'all doing tonight? I know everybody's muted, but I want y'all to like unmute yourselves. How y'all doing? Come on now. Come on now, y'all could be anywhere else in the world, but you here right now. <laughs> You're here right now. You're standing in solidarity with us because you know that we are on a monumental path right now. What we are accomplishing by making the decision that we made to, to vote for this historic strike. I need y'all to understand that while, while you are here, there are other people that are here in solidarity with us in spirit. They're here right now and they will be continuing to join this. So if you see them numbers flipping, that is why. So I welcome you tonight. Um, I don't know if you know who I am. My name is Marsha Howard. I am an English teacher. I have been in Minneapolis public schools uh, since 1998. I've been a member of MFT, a dues paying member for 23 years. And I have been in a fight uh, for black lives, for brown lives, indigenous lives for the last two years, about 263 steps that away at George Floyd Square. And so when I, Think about the fight that we are fighting in the Twin Cities. We're not just fighting 
on that corner, we're also fighting in our classrooms for safe and stable schools for our kids, for our communities, for our families, and for our colleagues. That fight is the same fight. We are fighting for a better nation, and we know our jobs as educators, our jobs as support staff, our jobs. It is so critical. And so when we stand, when we stand, and then we will be suffering the slings and arrows of a propaganda campaign that's going to try to look us dead in the eye and say that we're not there for kids. When we stand, I need you to be buoyed by the understanding that we, we are filled with a righteous, righteous, righteous spirit because we are doing this for safe and stable schools. I know when I look to my left and my right at my colleagues that we are here for each other. We are here for these families. We are here for these kids. Come on now, come on now. Don't let nobody turn you around, please don't. And I'm, I need you to be prepared. <laughs> I need you to be prepared for what this fight will entail. You're gonna be hearing from speakers tonight. They're gonna to fill you with this spirit. They're gonna let you know the practicalities of what it means to, to go on strike. If they don't come to the table and meet us in a way that we agree upon for what's best for us and those kids and these families and this school system and our professions, if they don't, we will be on that picket line on Tuesday and you are going to have to stand your ground hold the line and don't blink. Now I've been hearing because I talk to my colleagues and people say, well, if it's three days or six days or 10, mm -mm, don't blink, don't blink. You know why we're doing what we're doing. We need to stand our ground and hold on and hold out and hold steady with the idea that our community is with us. Come on now. They're with us, our kids are with us. And we know why we are doing what we are doing. Y'all, please understand that we have solidarity across the nation, across the nation. People are saying, hey, should I show up? Do you want me on the picket line? Y'all gotta let me know. I'm like, I'm at Roosevelt, so I'll see you outside. Um, but you need to understand that when we stand, we stand together, we stand united, we stand strong. Minneapolis, St. Paul, come on. Teacher chapters, ESPs, come on. They standing with us and you know why we stand it. Do not blink, do not blink, come on now. Now, the first person that I wanna introduce you to um, is my president of the MFT chapter, teacher's chapter, Local 59. Greta Callahan, and she is leading us so, so well in this fight. And I am absolutely uh, gratified to introduce you to Greta Callahan. Thank you, Ms. Howard, bringing me to tears over here. Um, well, I'm just honored to see all of you here. Thank you so much for the solidarity. My name is Greta Callahan. I'm a kindergarten teacher. I'm a mother of a child in our district of Minneapolis Public Schools. And right now I'm the teacher chapter president of our union, the Minneapolis Federation of Teachers, Local 59. And like Marcia said, we are fighting for safe and stable schools right now. Uh, we have been for a long time and for decades we've watched um, the proliferation of charter schools, corporate ed reform, the defunding of our public schools happening. We've watched those at the top continue to run our schools like a business with a corporate top-down model. And as the MFT, we haven't withheld our work in 52 years. So since 1970, we have not had a strike. And it shows in, in the power we've had or lack thereof. And as we deal with a lot of the issues that so many of us are dealing with around the country. Right now, we're sitting here fighting for a living wage for our education support professionals, our hourly workers who do some of the most important work in our schools. And right now, our paid poverty wages at an average of $24,000 a year. We are fighting for a living wage for them. And that means that our kids have more stability then about who is in front of them and who they have relationships with. 
we're fighting for more mental health supports. And that means more licensed school counselors, social workers, school psychologists. Right now we have some of the worst ratios in the country when it comes to students to counselors, students to social workers. And again, um, it shows, right? Our kids need more, deserve more pandemic or not. And right now we continue to um, not provide those supports for our kids. And um, even when our district says that they are, they're actually outsourcing it. So uh, strangers who our kids don't know are coming in for some hours during the week and that's not uh, providing adequate supports for our kids either. We're fighting for class size caps and caseload caps because right now there are pretty much uh, no rules and we have class sizes of you know 40 kids and it's not about us trying to teach 40 kids. 40 kids have to learn in that class. At our online school, which has a wait list right now and um, all year long has only been increasing in enrollment because our district refused to offer online options at the site level this year, we're seeing class sizes go up to 60 students in a class. This is dangerous. There's no data to support that any of that is okay for kids. We are in a righteous fight. When Marcia said the community is behind us, that's because we're fighting for our students. We're fighting for our schools and improving our city. Um, so our members voted and our ESP chapter was at 98% of members saying yes. And the teacher chapter, 97% of our members said yes. So there's no question on where we're at or what we're willing to do. We had hundreds of people sign up to join our union just to vote yes to lose pay, right? Like think about that. That is how important this fight is right now. People are saying we will go walk off the job and not get paid. And we're gonna pay to join the union to vote yes to do that because it is so important right now. Um, so we're really feeling the solidarity from around the country and we're so grateful and really we're feeling the solidarity even within our own school system and our cities. Our food service workers voted at 98.5 percent said yes to strike in the Minneapolis public schools yesterday. In December, our bus drivers voted. 100% of their members said yes to strike. Things are not okay when four bargaining units in one school system voted yes to authorize a strike in one year. And of course, our colleagues across the river in St. Paul also are um, dealing with the same stuff. And are, as Leah will talk about, a lot of the things we're fighting for, St. Paul has already won and St. Paul has been on strike uh, in the recent years as well. So there is so much power in collective action and we are ready to change the world with our collective action and our collective voices. So we are fighting for the same thing so many of you are. We're up against mismanagement of taxpayer dollars, of corporate ed reform, of defunding of public education. And we're no longer gonna sit around and allow this to happen to our kids or our schools. We're going to do something about it. So thank you for standing by our side. We are so grateful that you're here and I'll turn it back to Marsha. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yep. Y'all can clap if you want to. You can. Um, we appreciate your leadership and I just want to echo the fact that four bargaining units in one district decided that they were going to all strike at the same time. It's telling you that something is fundamentally wrong, but I will tell you this, the fact that we decided to do this, teachers did after 50 years tells you there's something fundamentally strong about our union and about this moment. The time is now, the time is now. Don't let them tell you different, the time is now. Solidarity, thank you, solidarity. Now, I work with some of the best educators and the best educational support staff there is. Uh, um, and I'm going to introduce you to one, Mariah, Mariah from um, the MFT. She is the first vice president of the um, ESPs. And I want Mariah Robertson Moody uh, to come on deck. Uh, I have so much respect for this person. Uh, please listen to her, Mariah. Thank you, Marsha, Teddy Nation. <laughs> we work at the same school. <laughs> um, so hi, how are you? My name is Mariah Roberson Moody. Um, I am the first vice president for our ESP chapter here at MFT 59. Um, I'm also one of the lead negotiators for our ESP bargaining team. Um, and just to kind of echo some of what um, Greta was saying, 
Um, our fight right now is for a livable wage for our ESPs. That is the bottom line. Um, we can't continue with how things have been, um, mainly not only just because I am one of those people that makes $24,000 a year. I can't afford to work here anymore and my colleagues are the same. And um, when you lose good staff, you have to really think about who that's really impacting. Um, it's impacting the schools, it's impacting, you know, like everybody else and your coworkers, but it's mainly impacting our students. And that's really what we're in a fight for right now. Um, we cannot continue to do the things that we have been doing because they don't work. Um, and that is very, very clear that they don't work. Our students right now, they need support. Um, and our districts need to be investing in the people that are providing those supports. Because when they're not there, our students are the ones that lose out. Um, so we want to make it very clear that our wages um, are a huge part of how we create stability within our schools. People leave when they are not respected for the work that they do. Um, so we want to make sure that a livable wage for ESPs is what um, we're getting, uh, we want to make sure that we're increasing our hours so we have time to collaborate and better prepare for students. Um, and so we can prepare and, and work with our colleagues so we can, um, right, $35,000 a year ain't enough. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we are asking for $35,000 starting, um, which should tell you like we're not really, we're not asking for a million dollars. Nobody's asking to be a millionaire um, that's ESP. We just want to be respected. Um, not only with, you know, verbally being respected, being a part of the team in the district, but also with our wages. We want to be respected for the work that we provide, um, which is valuable work for our students' education. So livable wages, we want to make sure that our hours are increasing so we can provide better supports for our students. And we want to make sure that we're getting equitable health insurance because right now our ESPs as well as other hourly workers are paying the same amount in their health insurance costs as um, administrators. And for somebody that has family insurance, that can mean that you're getting a check that's less than $500 after two weeks of um, working um, full time. So we want to make sure that we're getting those wages and equitable um, insurance for our folks. Um, and I just want to say uh, to, to some of the points that have already been made here. Um, what Greta was speaking about, um, solidarity with all. We know that this is not working um, and we're not asking anymore. We're demanding that this changes because we work the closest with our students and we see the impact of when we keep the status quo. And if our districts are not gonna listen, then we're gonna demand that that changes because at the end of the day, our students cannot continue to be the ones that are losing out on good education. Um, so. We're gonna to continue to fight. We're gonna be on that picket line. At the end of the day, if Minneapolis doesn't wanna uh, do what's best for our students, if St. Paul doesn't wanna do what's best for the students, they're gonna see people out on the picket lines because we're not coming here to waste our time to do, you know, to just work here. People really, really care about their jobs. Um, and we wanna stay here. We wanna stay in the district. We wanna stay working with our students students and we want to be able um, to afford to be able to do that. So, um, you know, any type of solidarity support, that would be great. Um, solidarity to all our food service workers, everybody. And um, yeah, we, we uh, hope to see you guys on the picket lines on March 8th if things don't work out. <laughs> Woohoo! Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mariah. Um, again, I work uh, with Mariah. And so when I have to explain uh, to my students uh, what's going on in uh, Twin City schools, especially with our educational support personnel, uh, and I talk about poverty wages and I talk about who's mostly affected by poverty wages as an African-American teacher, as a teacher of color, an educator of color, my colleagues that most look like me are ESPs. And there is no reason why my colleagues who clock in when I clock in and leave when I leave should be getting paid to the point where Target just started saying they're about to pay people $24 an hour. And my principal was like, I think we're gonna start losing people. When you work with students, it is a calling, a calling. And in order for you to be okay 
pursuing your call, you need to have your challenge, you need to have your camaraderie, your coworkers, right? Yeah, the kudos are great, but you also need the coin. And you, you're not gonna give people kudos when you need to give them coin. A pat on the back ain't paying rent. It's not paying rent. Come on, y'all, come on. It's not just a problem over here and it's not just a problem with ESPs. We are fighting even in the teacher chapter for getting equitable pay that's gonna be commensurate with the way that time has gone past and they have not made our paychecks uh, match that. St. Paul Federation of Educators are also in this fight. And to speak to that, uh, Leah Van Dosser, come on in, come on. Thank you. Very much, Marsha. I, I, uh, I guess I could pretty much say um, Minneapolis. We everything you just said is true for us as well, with maybe one change, except for the livable wage for our ESPs in our in our in our contract. We already have class size language in our contract. We already have mental health support language in our contract. Our fight this time around is to defend what we already have in our contract. Our district came back after a strike two years ago and said, we're taking it all back. And we've been working on some of this language for the last 10, 12 years. We didn't get this all overnight. This wasn't all brand new stuff. And, uh, and we it was just, it's appalling. It's ludicrous that they would do this to us and try to do this to us right now with the way things are going in our, in our society all the things Mariah just said about how our educators are treated, it is exactly the same in St. Paul right now. We are, we're facing the, some of the same struggles and issues in our classes and people leaving and not feeling supported and respected in what they do for our students. And you know, additionally, I don't think this has been brought up, but the state of Minnesota currently has a almost a 10 billion with a B budget surplus right now. And I, I don't see that as a surplus when we have schools that are underfunded, when we have other social things going on in our city, we have people that are unhoused, we have other things happening. This is all interconnected. It's what our districts don't understand. When our students are safe and housed and well-fed and their parents have a job that pays a living wage, they come to school and they're ready to learn. And if that's not, that's all part of this. It's not just this or this. We're not just looking for some small thing to happen. This is larger than that. And when 70% of education funding comes from our state government and they're saying we should just give everybody a check to get rid of this money because everybody deserves more. And they still leave the kids sitting out there without what they need to do school. It's, it's just, un well, I'll let Jeff talk about it. Jeff is a, is a member of SPFE. And he's got a great way of putting it. And I'm going to turn it over to him now because I think you'd rather hear from him anyway. Um, I'm tired of hearing it from me, but I'm going to turn it over to Jeff and let him kind of talk. That's Jeff Garcia, whoever's flipping the pictures. But um, yep, there he is. Great. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you so much, Leah, and everybody for being here. Um, my name is Jeff Garcia. I'm a special education teacher um, in my third year at St. Paul Public Schools. And before that, I worked in community education in St. Paul. Um, I am a native New Yorker, so let's go Buffalo to you uh, Starbucks folks as a former barista. Um, but I'm not here to talk about all that. I am a special ed teacher. I came in to the district as a teacher um, from being an ESP, from being a TA, uh, making, you know, roughly, I, I would take home a couple hundred bucks each paycheck, um, you know, running around all day after high school kids. And um, I entered with high hopes. I went through the district's kind of grow your own um, teacher program, which was meant to increase teachers of color and encourage ESPs who had degrees to kind of come into, um, not only into teaching, but into the highest need areas, you know, elementary education and special ed. And I chose special ed. Let me tell you of the, 20 something people, mostly folks of color who went through my cohort. I would say of the 24 of us, probably about seven are no longer teaching in the district, mostly folks of color. The rest of us that are still here, the mo most of us are strike captains. So that should tell you something about how much they gassed us up, about how much the district needed us. And when we saw the reality, 
our first year was the first strike year and all of us walked. That should tell you something. So what does the strike mean for me as a special ed teacher? Um, last year during I, what I thought was gonna be the hardest year of my teaching career and surprise it's this year, I had um, a caseload of students that at its peak was at 22 students. 22 students with IEPs, with behavioral needs, with mental health support needs that I had to somehow meet on my own because we could not retain a sixth grade TA. So here I am, 22 sixth graders, 22 families with different parents, uh, different folks I needed to contact um, and different needs, trying to meet all of them. If I had been in person, it was hard enough online. If I'd been in person with no TA, with no ESPs helping me out, I don't know how I would have done it. I barely did it last year. Um, it was the closest I came to quitting because I, once, especially once we got back in the building, it was me keeping track of at that point, 20, 21 students who all had a ton of need, were scared of COVID um, and just needed somebody to nurture them. And I did my best. The mental health team at my school saved me, saved my career and saved my kids' mental health. Our social workers, our nurse, our uh, behavior specialists who could tap in and give people breaks, um, talk with them about what was going on if they were ticked at me. I could step out and talk to somebody because I knew I had support. I knew I had a mental health team. And yet, there, it wasn't enough. But without that team, I would have been up the creek. So when the district has come to us and said that waiting special education caseloads for a setting one and two, you know, basically students with anywhere from like a moderate to low level of need, when saying that lightening our workload for someone like me would just make us increase kids minutes in special ed because we wanted to be lazy, that is the biggest insult that I could think of because I did not see a single person from the C-suite waltz into my classroom and offer to help, offer to give me a break when I was running around on my prep, trying to make sure that my kids were taken care of. So what does that mean for me? It means that with a weighted caseload, with smaller class sizes, I can afford to give my kids the time they need for their goals. I can actually move them along in their learning. I can take time to talk to them um, instead of essentially trying to just corral, right? Trying to just make it through the day. That's not, that doesn't serve them. And my job is to serve them. And I'm ready to strike to make sure that those things happen, to make sure we keep our mental health teams, to make sure we keep our class size limits, to make sure my colleagues in general education's workload is sustainable, and to make sure that the behavior interventionists and the EAs in my building get um, enough money and can keep their jobs. And to make sure I don't lose any more cohort cohort mates to the disrespect. And I wanna leave y'all with a quote from, I'm proudly Puerto Rican, I wanna leave y'all with a quote uh, from Pedro, Pedro Abisu Campos about uh, my grounding of why I'm ready to strike and why I'm ready to get the schools that St. Paul kids deserve. La ley del amor y la ley del sacrificio no admiten la separación. The law of love and the law of sacrifice do not admit separation. So if I have to sacrifice to get what my kids need, to get what St. Paul kids need, then that what bigger act of love is that? Back to you, Marsha. Thanks, y'all. Mm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love to hear you speak. I love to hear you speak. And I need people to hear this testimony because what Jeff is speaking to is this idea of, we have to look at the books to see if there's enough money in order to support you in the way that you need so that you can support these kids. And we know there's money because my governor was on the cover of Star and Tribune fist bumping somebody over that, <laughs> that surplus. It's about nine billion, 
Now I've been in open negotiations for the 24 demands at George Floyd Square. And I remember being in a, a room with city council and they were like, you know, it's COVID, there's no money. I said, just wait, just wait. And in the meantime, if you got to look in the cushions of your couch, you need to find the money to do what's right. And sure enough, not a scant six months later, they talked about the first billion dollar surplus. It was 1.6 and it has inched up and up and up. It is 9 billion. Y'all, we sitting on 9 billion in surplus. And do we think our kids are enough? Do we think that they are worth investing in? That's all we asking. 70% of our budget comes from those dollars. They better come on. They better come mm -hmm. up and don't feel bad about asking for it. All right. Mm -hmm. We got another oh, speech. I'm going to jump in up. real quick. Go ahead, Jessica. Hi, my name is Jessica Garraway. Uh, I am with MFT. I am a, a reserve teacher. I'm a sub. And just to be real brief about it, um, as a sub, you see the state of schools all over the city. And every school I go to, it is chaotic in that there are not enough subs in general to cover shifts. Um, it's, it's, a uh, you can tell just talking to the staff that it's, it's been really chaotic and things are not safe and stable. And that's why we're going on strike is because the, as workers, we deserve a safe and stable environment and our kids obviously without a doubt deserve that environment. So that's why, um, that's just a little small piece of, <laughs> from a sub, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it, 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 there, there's no other way around it. We got to fight. So I just wanted to say that, and I'm posting right now in the chat, um, there's a link um, talking about Minneapolis and St. Paul, how to what the what the fight is some of the stuff we've already talked about it's been posted throughout the talk tonight but just posting it again if you want to get that background read those links and also there are links to how you can directly as an individual and as a member of an organization as an organization how you can plug in and and further this fight so uh yeah we're gonna i I'm excited for this strike because I know we we're, we got this. We're going to win. The resolve is strong. And uh, we're also going to do it with the support of, of of the community here and across the country. So I'm going to pass it back on. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you so much. The support of the community and across the country. We got people coast to coast, all right? Including, but not limited to James Scredder from Scar Starbucks Workers United in Buffalo, New York. Come on now, come through, come through. Show them what community looks like, unity looks like, solidarity looks like. Come on, James. That's right. This is what it looks like. I I am, first of all, I am so angry um, hearing everything that y'all are sharing. I, the, the, this is just in, really incredible. You know, I, I spent the day being kind, kind of ha happy at work, enjoying myself, but now I'm just pissed off again. And uh, it's inspiring to be in a room with so many uh, incredible people who lead lives that are foregrounded with love and compassion for trying to build a better world, for putting this energy that you put into caring for kids every day is a brave act, considering the fact that our governments refuse to give you the resources that you need to be able to do that in a way that really empowers you to lean into your love and compassion and care and what you can offer everybody. And this is why it's so important that we are all together fighting to make a better world and we all do this work ourselves because nobody else is gonna do it for us, right? I think that one of the things that's been really special about Starbucks, you know, I'm here in Buffalo, we formed uh, one of the first Starbucks unions uh, uh, we formed the first unionized Starbucks at a corporate Starbucks store in the country last year in December, and our movement has spread. We filed election petitions at uh, 115 stores uh, in just that short amount of time. We don't have any in the Twin Cities yet, but just you wait. You'll, you'll be having a unionized Starbucks coming to the Twin Cities at some point. And the reason why I wanted to mention this is what's really special about Starbucks workers and how they're organizing is that the workers themselves are doing the work 
of making the organizing happen. You know, we've got some really incredible support from Workers United that's helping helping us with legal issues and giving us advice. But the reason why Starbucks workers are unionizing the way they are are because the workers are the ones who are doing the organizing. We are fighting for our workplaces because we deserve to have a say in how it is that our workplace is run. And it's the exact same situation in any place where you have a boss or an administrator or some kind of corporate person trying to call the shots. If the workers don't have a say in how that place is going to be run, you sure as hell know it's not going to be run with the interests of those workers and the, the people that those workers are serving in mind. And that's exactly the situation that we're seeing all across the country in education spaces and exactly what you're describing with where y'all are at. You know, schools are being run like businesses. Greta talked about corporate ed reform. You know, Leah and Marcia, you both mentioned that Minnesota has a nine to ten billion dollar budget surplus. A state government shouldn't be run like a ruthlessly efficient business. It should be run with a vision for building society in which every human can flourish. It should be run with a vision that puts the well-being of people first, that gives them the power to be able to take control of their lives. And that means funding schools, supporting the people who are working in those schools. I mean, the kids are the future. Why don't we why don't we treat those spaces like they ought to be, right? So I think it's awful to have to walk a picket line. Walking a picket line sucks. But it is, I would say, the single most important thing that I have done to help understand why we need organized labor, why we need to be in a union movement where we can use our power collectively to get our corporate overlords to actually listen to us to give us what it is that we need. Nurses here in Buffalo were on strike for a full month back in, uh, back in September. Um, they won every of their demands. It took them a full month, but they won. They had each other's back and they fought through it. And now they have the, the staffing levels that they deserve and they were given back pay for the entire strike period. You know, the power of collection, collective action uh, cannot be underestimated and I just want to say how uh, honored I am to be able to be here among so many incredible people and voice the solidarity of all of the Starbucks workers who are organizing to try and have a real democracy in their workplaces, try and have a real say in how it is that their workplace is run and be able to fight for getting a living wage, you know, fight for having a bit of ownership over where it is that you spend so much of your day, right? Uh, Marcia, this comment was so that you shouldn't be giving people kudos when you should be giving them coin. Everybody needs to walk away with that. That's right. So um, I'm going to ramble if I keep on going too much. But the last thing I'll say is you've got some incredible union leaders. These, uh, the, the, these people in this room are working so hard to make everything happen. But to all the teachers, all of the rank and file in this space, you have to do the work yourselves, right? we all have to be in this together. And the more that you rank and file teachers are empowered to have a say in how it is that your school is run and how it is that your union is run, the stronger an organization you're gonna be. Real democracy is what you all are gonna show will make change happen and build a better world. So solidarity to you all. And I hope you don't have to go on strike, but if you do, you will have the support of us here at SB Workers United. Ooh, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. I think about all that y'all did in Buffalo in order to unionize that corporate Starbucks. Um, I, if anybody's not impressed with that, you should be. Uh, because you know there are movements here where they are trying to go union in huge corporations and they get busted up and um, infiltrated and discouraged and we have a union. And I'm going to say this right now. Right now, when we all hype about what we're about to do, don't let nobody turn you around because those propaganda techniques, that sort of fear and, and under 
defining and the doubt, they are gonna throw that in our face. And I want y'all to look with conviction when they ask us, what about the children? Say exactly, you know why we doing what we're doing. Don't let them try to tell you different. You know why we're doing what we're doing. Stand strong. I want y'all to know that we have solidarity across the country, not just in New York, all the way on the other side. Matter of fact, I think we got somebody coming right now. Is it Keith Brown from Oakland? Oh, how you doing? How you doing? Hey, I'm just so um, happy to be here and sending love and solidarity from um, Oakland, California, um, the educators um, of Oakland. Um, we, we, got, we got your back. And the fight that you are taking on in the Twin Cities, it's, it's a righteous fight because you are centering our students our students of color. You are fighting for all of the things that our, our students um, deserve as far as mental health supports, um, lower class size, and also a living wage for educators to make sure that we can keep our best educators, teachers, and ESPs, um, keep them in the community to be able to serve um, our students. And um, one thing I'm just hearing today from um, uh, President Leah um, about the state of, um, uh, of Minnesota with a $10 billion surplus, the money is there to fund public education for, for our students. Without a doubt, the money is there. You, you have Target, you have US Bank. The, it is no reason why um, the powers that be um, should be able to make sure that, that, that our students have all of the resources that they deserve. So um, in Oakland, uh, we are standing um, with you. And I want to point out too, and in, in, in my state, California, conservatively, we're looking at um, a forty-six billion dollars surplus. But um, I'm in a district that is trying to close schools um, in in black neighborhoods. So this is this is a fight across the country for our students. This is a fight against. Um, billionaires to make sure that um, they invest in our schools and just in 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 in, in California, um, we 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 have your back. Um, we we're here um, to offer um, support, and um, I um, I I'm just looking forward to seeing. Uh, the Twin City educators bring that purple rain. I'm a, I'm a Prince fan, and I know um, some of y'all know on um, Prince's um, Controversy album, he said, leaders stand up, organize. So that's what we're doing right now as educators standing up and organize, and we got your back. Thank you. Thank you so much, California love. I love it. I love it, y'all. They got our back. They got our back. And we need to have each other's back. Look to your left, look to your right. When you see a colleague say, I got your back, because I'm going to tell you right now, for people who've never been on a picket line or stood on a corner for 21 months, they might get a little nervous. Don't blink. From California, from California, we also got uh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles teachers, Cecily, Cecily uh, Meyer Cruz. Thank you so much for being here. Hello. What's up, family? Hey. Uh, hey. Let me say this. It's always a pleasure to follow my brother from the Bay. We always keep it right. And we always say the Bay to LA or the LA to the Bay. Listen, family, this is the time. The time is now. The time is now. We've got to stand up because privatizers 
charterizers are going to try to hold us up. They're going to try to tell you, don't do it. What about the kids? We are doing exactly. this for the babies. We are doing this for the babies because yeah. listen, mm -hmm. y'all know that nobody is going to give us what we need. We got to take it. Mm -hmm. Our schools, our communities have been historically underfunded. They have been historically targeted for privatization. Mm. And they have been disproportionately impacted by this pandemic. And what we just heard is that there is $9 billion. So I'm going to say this, there are 9 billion reasons why you got to get on that picket line and stand up for your kids. This is about the baby. Now, Marsha said, and other people said, don't let them turn you around. They are going to use some fear tactics. They are going to use some uncertainty and some doubt. We call it FUD, F-U-D, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And what I am telling you, Twin Cities folks, y'all got to stand up because it is this time. It is this time that we have to do what we got to do. I don't care if it's snowing. Listen, we were in the pouring rain and our 35,000 members said nobody is going to turn us around because it is about respect. It is about our livelihood. It is about our kids. And if it is about our kids and you know that it is, then you got to do what is right. You got to do what is right. And what is right is what folks said. We deserve respect. We deserve smaller class sizes. We deserve a living wage. Our babies deserve to be in stable, safe schools. We deserve it. Why must we cower down? Why must we uh, conform ourselves to say we don't deserve it when we have folks leaving the profession? This is the time to demand what we need. And so I'm going to leave you with Ella Baker because I'm drawing the ancestors today. She said, mm -hmm. we who believe in freedom cannot rest. So Twin Cities, this is our time. Stand up, stand up, stand up and demand for freedom to not rest. Peace. Yes, mm -hmm. oh, come on now, come on now. Solidarity, y'all. Come on, I hope you heard it. Did you hear it? it? Did it you hurt. hear it? Did you hear it? Did you feel it? Did you feel it? Come on now. Come on now, come on now. This is not an ordinary day. This is not an ordinary time. We're standing up and we're standing together. We're standing up and we're standing together. We're standing up and standing together, not just in the Bay, not just in LA, not just in Buffalo, even in the Midwest. They said, oh no, all these Twin City teachers, they not gonna be able to stand together. Yes, we will. We not gonna blink. It's solidarity. Don't think you finna get some Midwest middling up or here. No, you're not. And you know who can talk about it? You know who can talk about it? Also Midwest, Chicago, Chicago. I thought Stacy was gonna be here. Stacy Davis Gates, who is the CTU Chicago Teachers uh, Union Vice President, but because of a family emergency, she couldn't do it. But you know who we got? We got Jen Johnson. Jen Johnson, I know I'm hyped. Don't worry about me. I'm gonna close us out. But you are so, so very welcome for standing in solidarity with the Twin Cities. I'm getting emotional just because y'all, the world is watching and the nation is watching the Twin Cities. Please understand that. Please understand that. Get on your social media and let your people know. Let your people know what you're doing. Let your people know about the strike fund. Let them know because we're going to be doing mutual aid. Come on now. But Jen Johnson, you got it, okay?
Thank you, Mar Marsha. You know, it's not cool, A, that I have to step in for my colleague, my sister, Stacey Davis Gates tonight, because it's her son's 13th birthday. So she needed to actually spend some time with her family because she's always working. And every single one of the people on this Zoom tonight is always working. Um, our educators are always working. Even when they're home with their own kids, they're getting text messages, emails, calls, right, about the students' uh, needs, and they're trying to meet them. But second, not only do I have to replace Stacy tonight, but I have to follow my sister, Cecily, who is always the closer, okay? Um, and I just want to say I stand with everything Cecily said. I don't really need to talk but I want to send solidarity from Chicago. My mother actually grew up in Minnesota. Um, so I know a little bit about the Minnesota nice. Um, and just like Mar Marcia said, it's, it's not time to play nice when school districts and political leadership hold the bag and they hold the bag away from our students, right? Um, we, don't, we didn't get into this to be rich, but we, we did not enter this profession to be martyrs and our students deserve better than burned out educators who have to fight all the time for everything we need. So I'm here to send a message of solidarity and love to all of you um, in Minneapolis and St. Paul and to, to give a special shout out, to be honest, with um, to the St. Paul Federation of Educators with whom we've had such a, an incredible mutual relationship for years. And I am so excited that SPFE and MFT are united in this fight. How powerful is that. That is the sign of incredible organizing on the ground, incredible strategy and forethought that across our unions, we are standing together. Um, I was been lucky enough to come to St. Paul multiple times to, to learn from St. Paul Federation of Educators around restorative justice, around what makes strong, inclusive, anti-racist climate teams in schools. And so I know they, they have a track record. And so I know that the things that SPFE and MFT are fighting for are aligned to what we call bargaining for the common good. Yes, we deserve our rights. We deserve our pay as educators. But as Leah talked about earlier, Everything about our conditions and our work is connected to the social conditions that our students go to school in, in that context, right? We, we have to be proud um, to say that, to say that we are not just fighting for pay, that we are fighting for conditions that will help alleviate housing uh, constraints for our students and families. So let me just punctuate that by highlighting a few things that we won in CTU after our 11 day strike in 2019. Um, we should not have to fight for these things, people, but we have to be willing to do so. In our 2019 strike, we won for the first time full-time positions of individuals who would work in schools with the highest levels of homeless students in those schools. Why should we have to fight for that, right? But we should be willing um, to, to sacrifice, to stand on the picket line, to address the needs of our students so they can come to school communities with what they need. So we won positions to help people with homelessness. We want staffing for our school communities. I heard a lot of people talking about staffing earlier, um, but we had to go on strike to get a promise of a nurse in every school by the end of our contract, right? We shouldn't have to do that, but, but with a strike, we now have enforceable language and have seen increases in staffing. We also had to go on strike for enforceable class size. We've never had enforceable class size in our contract. And for the first time after an 11 day strike, we have enforceable class size in our contract and $35 million committed every year to help alleviate class size overages in our school communities to add additional staff and additional positions and pay people. And finally, I wanna address um, paraprofessionals, which came up criti critically important, right? Our school clerks, our teacher assistants, our, our uh, family and community engagement folks. We can't run schools without paraprofessionals. And oftentimes, as has already been said, the paraprofessionals are the black and brown women um, who live in the school communities where they work. Because of our strike, we won 40% pay increases over the life of the contract for our paraprofessional members. And they deserve that. Um, they, they ought not um, to qualify for benefits from the government while working a full-time job in the public school system. That is unacceptable. And that was the case in our, in our district. And so one of the key elements that we did say, pay is important and pay is important for our paraprofessionals. And like I said, 40% pay increases over the life of the contract as a result of that strike. And we won um, educational lane advancement for them for the first time, because many of these folks go to school, get degrees and had no recognition for it. So I'm just here to say, Striking is the hardest thing. Um, I was up there in Minnesota, actually my first, my last flight before the pandemic was coming back from St. Paul right before their strike in 2020. 
and the energy and the power that you you take on when you well, when you're willing to go on strike and when you fulfill um, that threat if you need to is life changing. Um, it affirms uh, everything you already know. It affirms everything that you already know, and you will have families and parents um, in your local school communities with you. And as we've already seen, you have supporters from all around the country. Um, we will be with you every step of the way. We have organizers from Chicago who are there on the ground supporting right now, and we will keep sending support on the ground right now because we're all in this together. That's the beauty of this um, National Educators United Network is that we recognize that our power collectively nationally is even greater that we are all facing the same privatization challenges, that we are all trying, all of the districts and municipalities try to gaslight us on what resources are available for our schools. And we're not gonna let that playbook um, be used against us. We're gonna share um, our strategies, share our learnings, share our demands and fight with one another. So Chicago Teachers Union stands with you, Chicago educators stand with you. You are fighting for everything you deserve and don't apologize for it. We will be with you today, tomorrow, and the next day. You do whatever you have to do because you are not asking for anything that is unreasonable. Solidarity. Ooh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Solidarity. You heard her. You heard her. We're not asking for too much. We're asking for what we deserve and what our students deserve, the families deserve. Y'all, I encourage y'all, if you have any questions to start putting them stacked in the in the chat. Um, I need y'all to understand that I ride so hard with CTU, CTU, not just because I went to elementary school at James McCosh, now known as Emmett Till uh, School on the south side of Chicago, but did y'all know that over the last two years, over the summer, uh, CTU sent union members to George Floyd Square to stand with me to stand with me in the middle of that square on 38th in Chicago. Uh, they stood with me just like MFT stood with me. MFT marched in there, but they flew somebody in. If somebody got flewed in to be standing with me at GFS. And I'm telling you right now, this fight is a bigger fight. And if you wanna look at yourself as a freedom fighter because you fight for these kids, do that, do that. So type stack in the chat if you would like to speak. You can ask a question, make a comment, uh, keep it no more than two minutes because you know I run my mouth and we're going to have to go to bed in a while. So I'm going to hush and go ahead and uh, we'll figure this out. If you have a question, a comment, you want to speak, you want to encourage your brothers and sisters in this fight, uh, let's go ahead and do that. And we left about 20 minutes. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. We want to prioritize uh, Twin Cities teachers, uh, SPFD, um, MFT members. Come on. If you got something that you want to say, uh, if you have questions, if you have concerns, um, type it uh, in the chat. Type stack in the chat. Robert Lewis, I see you. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Robert. Um, I'm a high school social studies teacher. And actually I myself am not in the union because I'm in an alternative school. But I was actually inspired to speak because I had a meeting today with um, a few different people. Um, one was representatives from the statewide union, but also another educator in an alternative school. And um, by the end, we just got into this conversation about the students in our, the alternative schools are the ones who like have the most weight of the world in terms of like just all of their struggles. And these are the students that come to us because the public schools can't handle them. And now I'm not at all blaming the teachers because, you know, we've laid out in this meeting like how much teachers have to do. But we, we take the students that are discarded and um, essentially try to do our best to support them with less funding. And some people say a third of the funding that the public schools get. And so we don't have the same kind of programming like sports and um, foreign language and clubs after school. 
and I just want to like lift lift up these students and these teachers who have no voice but who really have are at like the bottom right now and I just am so thankful for the teachers who have voted to go on strike because it's changing the conversation at our school um, where people are saying well maybe it's not just about working harder maybe it's about like demanding more and i've been trying for so long to get this conversation started and just by them looking around now seeing that teachers are refusing to take the abuse and the disregard it's really giving them the confidence to question things more um, and not accept the conditions that we're working in so all of us are really struggling right now and we, we support you. Um, we plan on coming out to the picket line in shifts. And at my school, I'm lucky enough that um, we can actually go on field trips. And so I will be taking a collection of students to the picket line as a field trip to learn about economics, because this is economics. Um, yes. <laughs> selectively bargain. And when you don't get what you want, you go on strike, you withhold your labor. So I'm excited to support the strike as a learning experience. So thank you for um, offering this opportunity and you have my complete solidarity. So thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Robert. Uh, since you're still on, uh, are you in the district? Are you in Minneapolis or St. Paul? Yes, we take students from the surrounding area schools who basically have dropped out, who have been you know, discipline with behavior issues, which just means the school can't serve them, can't address their needs, their trauma, their stress. And so they act out because they aren't supported enough. And I don't blame the schools. I blame our society for neglecting these students and their needs. And it makes me really angry just to see like how beaten down some of them are, where it's just for them a stress relief to, to come to school and just hang and like talk to each other and that's for some students that's the most we can do and i accept that as a form of therapy because we don't have enough therapists we don't know, have enough staff to be able to serve them and like create the sort of support that will help them kind of come out of their shell and start to work with their trauma in ways that um are more than just kind of like being teenagers who want to hang out and talk with each other <laughs> and every once in a while i do out of them as well. <laughs> well, thank you so much. And maybe we'll see you and your kids. Uh, but um, as a union member, I encourage you to join the union. Boom. Uh, stack order, Jessica. Um, Jessica, you want to speak? You got a question? Yeah, I do. I, I wanted to throw this out just to, into the ether. You know, we mentioned that we, what we're, you know, we're facing as educators having to deal with the system that is trying to dismantle public education, dismantle teachers unions, educators unions. And we, and it's, it's just something that's really sad to see. And we, sometimes we even see people um, that wouldn't benefit from these pro th these efforts at all, jumping in and, and advancing those, those corporate interests. So I just wanted to hear folks thoughts of like, how do we, you know, with, cause I think a lot of people, some of these folks who do so do it with the best intentions, because, you know, like Rob was talking about, we have so many students that society, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, oh, we as teachers, but society is failing and people are looking for answers. And my view is we need to provide like an alternative, like we need to talk about, we need to radically do education differently. We need to radically do society differently because it's not it's not serving us. And band -aid, putting Band-Aids here and there aren't going to do it, and it's not enough. So that's the message I try to get out there, trying to push that back. But hearing from people, how do we combat these ed reform messages that are really advancing things that are not going to help educators, but in, it's definitely not going to help students either? Yeah, that part. Uh, that part. I'm going to tell you this right now, you're going to get a lot of information from people who are going to try to throw it in our face that we live in a society that's not serving people of color well, and, and we should just blow everything up. I will go to the wall saying that public education is the only meritocratizing institution that we have left. 
and I will fight tooth and nail. And yeah, there are things that we are going to have to, to uh, change and, and develop and, and help. And while we in the boat and we are rowing the shore, we can talk about that, but put your back into it. We're gonna save public education, that part. All right, who else have we got on stack? I think it is. Marcia, could we go to uh, Jenna? I believe Jenna is a food service worker. And then while, while Jenna is talking, for everyone else, if you missed, Joshua wanted us to read his question. For those of you who have been through this before, if the strike goes on for a while, how do we keep our energy up and united? So maybe while Jenna is speaking, then some of you, if you want to come back on Joshua's question, you could. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, you guys. My name is Jenna Depri. I am a member of Local 284 SEIU. I'm a food service coordinator at the Davis Center, and we had a monumental vote turnout last night at our Local 26. And I just wanted to say you all are inspiring. You have moved us to a movement that we have never seen before in food service also, and we stand with you in solidarity. And I'm so proud of the work that you are doing and that we as food service are doing to make our schools a better and safer place for our students. Thanks, thanks so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm trying to look at who's on stack. Um, is there anyone else with a question or a comment that they would like to, to make? I see, nope. Jeff. All right. Um, I wanted to answer Joshua's question just for um, the sake. I'm, I'm assuming, uh, Josh, Joshua, that you're MFT or SPFE, maybe first year or second year. Um, so like I'd said a little bit, like very offhand before, there's um, it was my first year and a bunch of people at my building's first year uh, when it was the, our strike here in SPFE. And I would say that just the first day was probably the hardest. The first day I walked home, bone tired, freezing cold, and like, was just like, oh man, I feel like I've been hit with a sack of potatoes. But like the, it's really the, the chance to, the community with your colleagues counts for a lot. And we, we have learned uh, some things I think you know, because I mean, remember, like y'all over on that side of the river haven't done this since 1970. We hadn't done it before since 1947. So, you know, that um, I can tell you a couple tips, right, without going too long. Um, one of my uh, colleagues is bringing a nice fishing tent and a propane heater this time around. So work in shifts. Um, and uh one of our teachers in, in SPFE has actually broken down uh, strike roles into Dungeons and Dragons classes. So maybe you're, a, maybe you're a cleric, right? Maybe you're having the warming house. Maybe you're a bard, you're the one doing the chanting and singing. Maybe you're a fighter, you just like walking a lot and you can hold up a sign for a long time. Um, you know, and maybe you're a rogue. Maybe you gotta get sneaky with it and set up a little camp, that's okay. So, you know, find, find your niche. And it that helps a lot. I like that. Uh, <laughs> um, I have Jay Glocker on stack. Hi, I'm Janet Glocker, and I am a second grade teacher in Minneapolis Public Schools. I have been a teacher for almost 28 years in Minneapolis. And I want to also say that I'm a member of the Badass Teachers Association. And we have been working on public schools being fully funded through the, on the federal level and state level for so many years. And I wanna make sure I say this, public education is the foundation of this country. I mean, come on. It is the foundation of our country. No matter who walks in my classroom, they are my student. New students from Afghanistan have come to our schools. I love them. 
I had students from Vietnam. I have students that were from the former Yugoslavia. I have had students from all over the world in my career. And let me tell you, every student that walks into my classroom is my kid, okay? So I don't, I'm not there for me. I'm there because they deserve a shot at being the best they can possibly be to live and function in this world. And I want everyone to remember when you get out there and walk, you're not just walking for the students that sit before you. It's, I, I'm gonna retire in a few years. You hear what I'm saying? I got three years, God help me, please get me to the retirement. You know what I'm saying? But I'm fighting for those kids that I have that are in kindergarten, those kids that are coming up from kindergarten, those refugees that come to us. I have taught Hmong students, you name it. We have them in the Twin Cities and across this country, for God's sake. Remember, we're public and there's a reason because we are the cornerstone of the foundation of this country don't ever forget it. We have to have public education and we must do everything we can to fight against ALEC and all the other forces coming in. The, the state testing, get rid of it all. It's all BS and we all know it. It's a waste of money. We deserve to have fully funding of all of our public education. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. I, it, I'm so happy to be on the strike line and I'll be there in my scooter because I don't even get accommodations at school because there's not enough staff. You hear what I say? I'm a kick-ass teacher that gets no help because we don't have staffing. So you know what? I'll be there with a scooter and I'm gonna fly my flag and I'm going up and down the street. You watch me. Thank you. Now, solidarity, y'all. Solidarity. Free quality public education being a cornerstone of the foundation of this country. And that should not be a radical statement. It shouldn't be a radical statement, not in 2022. Asking for fully funding, funded schools should not be a radical notion, not in 2022. Y'all know what it is that we do for this nation. You know what it is we do for our communities. You know what it is, y'all. Come on. <laughs> they already trying to form a strike marching band. Guess what? I know some people, okay? I know some people. We'll get a glockenspiel up in there. Um, um, we need to get fully funded schools and we need to stand up. Drumline, we got that. Anybody I else? I bought a tambourine. I bought a tambourine. Girl, I'm bringing it. <laughs> oh yeah, I got one of those. I got my voice and I got bullhorns. I'm telling you, I got 21 months of experience out here. So let us know if, if you don't know what it feels like to be in open protest and be on a picket line, you're going to get a crash course. Mm -hmm. Make sure y'all lean on your strike captains. Make sure that you lean on each other as staff because you were staff in that building. You're going to be staff in the street, okay? Y'all going to be colleagues in the street. So make sure that you take care of each other because all we going to have is each other while we staring dead in the district space, okay? Make sure that a tin whistle. <laughs> cowbell, more cowbell. More cowbell. <laughs> hey, Marsha, did you see the comment from Tati? Let me see. I want to, I think we should, since this is live on Facebook, I want to know if you can't see it, I can read it, but if you can I, find I it. I see it right now. Can I read it out or Tati, yeah. you want to read this out loud? It said, hey y'all, my name is Tatiana and I teach education at CUNY in NYC. I teach undergrads who are studying to become teachers. We discussed the strike vote last week and my students were very excited and inspired by your actions. We took a picture in solidarity and we stand in solidarity with you. And you can go on Facebook or Instagram in order to see that picture. I don't have the technical capabilities to show you right or her, but if somebody else can do that, I am so incredibly uh, thrilled. Uh, people across the country, students across the country are seeing what's happening in Minnesota. And someone actually inboxed me and said, what's up with Minneapolis? What's up with Minnesota? Why do we seem to be the epicenter of so much action? Yes. I don't know. That's just how we built. Mm -hmm. That's how we built right now. That's just how we built. 
Hey, yeah. Marshall, there was one other good uh, comment from Joshua that was right below uh, Tati's that, that maybe right. might be worth reading too. I'll look um, at it right here. It says uh, Joshua, uh, no, at Joshua. I yep. think this is from Jen. I would add for strike morale, start with a routine. Our CTU one is often pickets in the morning and then a daily strike bulletin with updates sent to all members. So take time each day to discuss. And then we would have afternoon centralized actions like marches, car caravans. Picket morale is boosted with food, with heat, with music and music is a must, and consider what schools are near one another and which ones can meet up with each other periodically. Schools can pair up and pick it together. They can talk about updates and boost each other's spirit. If you consider this picket as a movement and the streets, your neighborhoods as a movement space, then you can think about the ways in which Minneapolis have become acculturated to movement action. We have to keep each other invigorated. We have to keep each other brave and strong. We have to show solidarity. So that's a routine. Don't let nobody be cold. Don't let nobody be hungry and make sure that nobody feels like they're alone. Nobody feels like they're alone. Y'all all know that we got coworkers that got more than one job. They may not be there the entire time, but in your scheduled time, you make sure that your particular site has people on that line, making noise, showing face and showing solidarity with each other. That is how you're gonna keep up your morale. Don't let nobody turn you around and just know that we're in this righteous struggle. You might have kids who just show up just to say hello, just to say they support you. You may have their parents show up and they can come with baked goods or whatever it is they're gonna show. You will be surprised and you will be gratified in the support that the, our communities are gonna show. So how do we keep up morale? Stay connected, stay in community because this is a shared struggle and we will, we will, we will win. Firm and strong, <laughs> yeah. Sing union songs, uh-oh, there's a union song. Y'all Y'all better get your chants together. I'm gonna start making some up. I am a uh, disappointed rapper in my other life. Um, yeah, Lady Fresh, let's not talk about it. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna come up with some more union chants as well. Uh, we gotta keep each other occupied and gratified and, and buoyed with the spirit. So let's do that. Oh, there's a picture on Instagram. Oh, I like that. Mo money, mo money, mo. Do the right thing, do the right thing, do it. We don't talk about graph, no, no, oh Lord. <laughs> Whoever comes up with the best parodies, um, yeah, there should be a prize involved. Uh, Y'all, this meeting is going on, how you feeling? So we can wrap this up, how you feeling? Come on, take it off mute, come on. Ready to Woo! go. <laughs> Feeling good. Oh, oh, Mike ready. Let's get it done. Mike ready. Energized. Oh. Ready. Ready. Thankful. Thank ready. You. Yup. 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 Yeah. Movement. Oh, everyone, thank you for the solidarity across this nation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm telling you right now, you're going to hear it. You're going to hear it in Star Tribune. You're going to hear it in opinion pieces. You're going to hear it online. You're going to hear it from reformers. You're going to hear it from people who will prop up parents with kids that look like your students. And they will say, I don't know why Minneapolis and St. Paul is doing this right now. And I'm telling you right now, you know why you are doing it. You yes. know why the time is now. And you ain't got to even say nothing that way because you know what you're doing. Do not let anyone turn you around. Please don't. Don't blink. Don't blink. You mm -mm. know we're doing it for them kids. So if they say, what about the kids? What's your answer? Exactly. 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 Oh, we got it's solid. Good it's, it's good trouble. trouble. It's good Courageous. trouble. It's good Courageous. You're trouble, courageous. You're good heroes. Trouble. Good trouble. I'm so proud to be in community with y'all. I'm so proud to be in solidarity with y'all. 
I'm fighting multiple fights and all of us probably are fighting multiple yep. fights that people don't understand that we fight. And so when it is time, we're gonna have to band together. We're gonna have to put our twos and fuse together. We're gonna have to help each other out, y'all. It's a thing that needs to happen. Nothing is going to be simple except this. You simply look in the mirror each day and say you are fighting the good fight for these kids, for these communities, and for your colleagues. You know why we're doing it. And if they try to tell you they ain't got no money, you better turn to them and say, you better check the cushions of your couch because I think you got about $9 billion sitting there. Don't let them turn. <laughs> Do not blink. Do not mm -hmm. blink. Do not blink. Hold the line. Hold the line. Solidarity, y'all. Cross the nation. Thank you for our parents. Thank you for our community. Thank you for our colleagues from C to C. We so appreciate it. We really, really do. Uh, we're going to be out here. Matter of fact, I'm going to be taking some union days. I'm coming to people's sites tomorrow. I'm coming to talk to you. Let me know. You can email me privately or send me a private message. If you need me to come to your site, come on now. I can rabble rouse. I'm a, hey, it's what I do. Let's go. Y'all ready? Hey. Yeah. Let's go. Ready. Have a good night, y'all. Good night. <laughs> night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Marsha. You